एवरी वन वेलकम टू द फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ वीक वन ऑफ प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिज़ाइन कोर्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कवर बेसिक डिज़ाइन पैरामीटर्स टू डिज़ाइन हीट एक्सचेंजर्स ओके सो बेसिक डिज़ाइन पैरामीटर्स सो बेसिक डिज़ाइन पैरामीटर्स टॉपिक आई विल कवर इन टू लेक्चर्स लेक्चर फोर एंड लेक्चर फाइव सो लेट स्टार्ट विद बेसिक डिज़ाइन parameters to design the heat exchangers okay now if i ask you that what is the basic equation in heat transfer okay because we are first going to design the heat uh, because we are going to first design the heat exchanger equipment you should understand the basic design equation and then whatever parameters involved in that equation that we will discuss one by one okay so what is basic design equation as far as heat transfer is concerned i hope that you all know that basic design equation for an exchanger is when we relate heat duty with heat transfer coefficient area and temperature difference okay so the basic design equation everybody knows if he or she is a chemical engineer that this is the basic design equation where q is equal to u a delta t m delta t m sometimes we call at delta t l m that is basically the log mean temperature difference but here we are generalizing it mentioning delta t m as a mean temperature difference that may be l m t d also now when i consider this equation and if i ask you is there any other equation for heat transfer your answer must be yes and what is that equation there we relate q is equal to mcp dt okay because uh, as far as this q is concerned as because as far as this q is concerned q is basically the heat duty heat duty means the capacity of transferring heat from one fluid to another fluid okay and that should be in balance that is the mcp dt of one fluid should be equal to mcp dt of another fluid so as far as heat transfer is concerned we have two basic equation first is m first is q is equal to mcp dt and that q is equal to u a delta t mean okay so as far as uh, different parameters of this equation q is equal to u a delta t m is concerned that all parameters you know very well u is equal to overall heat transfer coefficient a we consider as the heat transfer area and delta t m as the mean temperature difference or temp and delta t m is the mean temperature difference and the driving force available in the heat exchanger okay so this is the basic design equation now what would be the basic parameters then okay basic parameters will be when i consider q okay q is equal to mcp dt now in this k equation am i able to play with any of the parameter am i able to play with any of these parameters like can i change m can i change cp can i change temperature difference the answer is no because whatever system is available to you that is up to from this temperature to this temperature you have to transfer the heat you have to reduce the temperature of particular stream okay the flow of the stream is this much okay and if you are fixing the stream you can already fixed the property of it and that is the cp value right so q is equal to mcp dt you cannot play with it okay and similarly if i consider q is equal to u a delta t l m as you cannot change the temperature okay as you cannot change the temperature you cannot play with delta t mean terminal temperatures of both streams would be constant okay so you cannot play with delta t mean however you can make correlation between u and a correlation means 
u would be some factor into a i am not saying that i am saying that you can make a relation or you can make the connection between u and a as you are changing u you can change a okay so basic design equation in which different parameters are u a and delta t m okay so as i have told you you can fix delta t m okay but how you will consider u overall heat transfer coefficient because this overall heat transfer coefficient is again a function of different factors okay so let me first focus on basic parameter of this equation that is overall heat transfer coefficient and then we will discuss delta t mean okay if i am fixing these two i have already fixed if i am fixing these two we can already fix heat transfer area so heat transfer area is not the basic parameter you have to fix okay that you can understand as this is the design parameter because heat transfer area is a design parameter okay so let's discuss with overall heat transfer coefficient that is capital u now if you see this uh, overall heat transfer coefficient what it is basically this is the reciprocal of overall resistances to transfer the heat okay which is the sum of several individual resistances okay overall heat transfer coefficient is inversely proportional to the resistances okay whatever like if i am having the resistance and as i am keep on increasing that resistance i am putting extra hurdle in the path of transfer of heat and so the heat transfer will reduce as resistance will increase overall heat transfer will decrease and therefore overall heat transfer coefficient will decrease okay so that you know very well that overall heat transfer coefficient is inversely proportional to overall resistances in the path of transfer of heat okay now what these resistances are if i am considering a pipe okay let's say this is the pipe in which i am considering heat transfer coefficient at outer surface of it okay inside this one fluid is moving or outside uh, this a uh, fluid is moving you can understand this as a double pipe heat exchanger where this uh, particular uh, surface is the outer layer of inner pipe okay inside this one fluid is already moving fine now if i ask you what are the different resistances or how heat transfer will take place for to understand that you should understand the mechanism of heat transfer first okay let's say on annular side we have hot fluid and inside the inner pipe we have cold fluid okay now annular side if i am having the hot fluid the heat is first transferred from that hot fluid to the tube wall and then from tube wall to the inner side of the tube or to the inner or to the fluid which is flowing inside the inner pipe right so what are the resistances total if i am considering a double pipe heat exchanger let's say like this and uh, here i am having this double pipe fine so if you consider this outer layer outer surface of inner pipe then what will happen there must be some scale formation at in inner surface also there must be some scale formation it will not be uniform somewhere thickness is more somewhere thickness is less and above that we have the fluid film okay above that we have the fluid film so as far as heat transfer is concerned first from this uh, liquid the fluid will come over here the fluid will come over here okay and then from in this uh, layer we will have the transfer of heat through convection okay and after that heat will transfer through this uh, scale or dirt formation through conduction okay and after that we can have transfer of heat uh, from wall to the inner surface 
through conduction ok and further we can have the resistance which is offered by the dirt formation at inner surface of inner pipe ok and after that we will have this uh, formation of uh, fluid inside the inner pipe ok. So, in this case we can have the heat transfer due to convection fine. So, if I ask you what are the total, so if I ask you what are the total terms or parameters included in overall heat transfer coefficient when it is related to individual coefficient right. So, the expression will be like 1 by u naught that is the overall heat transfer coefficient will be equal to the overall heat will be equal to the film heat transfer coefficient at outer layer of uh, inner pipe and that is in the fluid ok that is with the fluid H O D is basically dirt factor or this is not basically dirt factor this is heat transfer coefficient of dirt ok. So, here we have this H O D is dirt coefficient which is available at outer surface of inner pipe fine. Further I am considering conduction in the inner pipe material ok and where this K W is the thermal conductivity of the material D O and D I that you understand that is the inside dia and outside dia of the uh, tube and further H I D if I am considering H I D is basically the dirt coefficient at inner side of inner pipe ok and similarly small h i is the inner coefficient con due to convection at inside the pipe. So, in this way we have total 5 terms ok. Now, what is this u naught capital U naught? Capital U naught is overall heat transfer coefficient considering outer area ok u naught means it is at the outside of the area of this is basically the outer area of tube ok. So, if I ask you what can be 1 by u i 1 by u i means here we have h i right and here we have h naught and we have d i by d naught over here ok. In this way we can consider 1 by u i that is overall heat transfer coefficient at inner surface of the inner area of the tube. So, I hope you understand the difference between u naught and u i ok. Now, how I can calculate this u naught? I can calculate this u naught once I know all these terms ok. I know if, if I know the individual heat transfer coefficient, dirt coefficient, thermal conductivity of the material then only I can calculate overall heat transfer coefficient right. But when we start the design of heat exchanger ok, when we start the design of heat exchanger I do not know anything about the exchanger except the temperature drop or temperature gain I have to consider along with the flow rates ok. So, at that time I am not aware of d i and d naught, I am not aware of material of construction h naught, h i no parameter I, uh, uh, I was no parameter I aware of right. So, in that case what I can do? In that case I have to take some initial guess for overall heat transfer coefficient ok and how that initial guess can be taken ok. For that we have this uh, graph, in this graph you see we have service fluid coefficient and process fluid coefficient ok. Now, what is service fluid, what is process fluid? Service fluid is basically that fluid which provides heat according to the requirement ok and process fluid is that fluid which temperature either increases or decreases as per the process requirement fine. So, service fluid will be called when there will be the requirement from process fluid side 
let us say we have to increase a fluid a process fluid from this temperature to this temperature. So, we will provide a steam as surface. So, we will provide a steam as service fluid. Okay. So, you must understand what is the process fluid, what is the service fluid. Fine. Now, let us say you know already about the process fluid. For example, if you have heavy organic as process fluid and let us say cooling tower water as service fluid. Okay. There are different service fluids available and there are different process fluids available. Let us say you have chosen these two. Then how you will consider overall heat transfer coefficient? To consider that if let us say I am having heavy organic, heavy organic range varies from this to this, right. Okay, this is the range of heavy organic. What I will consider that then? What I will consider then? I will consider the middle point of this, right. Similarly, if I am considering cooling tower water, the complete range is this, okay. And I will select the middle of that. I will select the middle of this. Now, I will join these two lines, these two points using a straight line. Here, a straight line uh, is not followed, but you have to follow the straight line. And wherever it will cut this central line, okay, wherever it will cut this central line means this point, this will give overall heat transfer coefficient assumed value, okay. As if you see here, this is the line for estimated overall coefficient. So, estimation based on these assumptions. Okay. So, to start the calculation because uh, if you consider the design of heat exchanger, first of all you have to calculate the area and then only you can calculate the tubes etcetera. Okay. For that you should aware about the overall heat transfer coefficient. In that case, we have to assume the value and this estimated overall coefficient is nothing but the assumed value. right? So, this graph will help you to calculate or so this graph will help you to assume the value of overall heat transfer coefficient as initial guess and this graph is available in volume 6, Richardson Coulson volume 6. I hope you all are aware with this book. Okay. And uh, in that book, uh, there is one table also where we have the range of overall heat transfer coefficient depending upon different combinations of the fluids and the heat exchangers. Okay. So, you can use that table or this graph whatever you want. Okay. So, it will only give you a start. Further, when you will have all 5 terms in overall heat transfer coefficient, you have to calculate the coefficient and compare with this assumed value. Okay. What is the criteria of comparing etcetera? All that we will discuss in detail design of heat exchanger in subsequent lectures. Okay. So, overall heat transfer coefficient you have considered. Further, if you recall the overall heat transfer coefficient expressions, what are the terms? H i and H naught that will depend on the heat transfer taking place in both fluids. Okay. For there, for that we have different correlations. Thermal conducted, thermal conductivity of the material was a parameter, but you cannot do anything with that because it will depend on the material, whatever you are choosing for tubes. Fine. And uh, next is we have to decide dirt factor also, okay? Because it has HID and HOD. Okay, HID is the dirt coefficient and HID is the dirt coefficient at inner layer, HOD is dirt coefficient at outer layer. So, let us move towards discussion on dirt factor, how we will choose the dirt factor or fouling factor. Okay. For that, most process and service fluids will foul the heat transfer surfaces in an exchanger to a greater or lesser extent. Okay. So, you cannot uh, say that uh, fluid will not foul the surface. Okay. Each fluid will have some tendency to foul the surface or to deposit the material over the surface, okay. either it is lesser or greater. So, whatever material is deposited that we call as dirt factor. Okay. Now, my point is 
how this dirt formation occur okay how we can say that scaling is formed or fouling occur in the system to give an example let's say if i am dealing with water okay so usually what happens as we increase the temperature okay as we increase the temperature solubility of the material in the liquid is increased right however there are some fluids or there are some component for which solubility decreases with increase in temperature for example if i am having water which has a scale formation component such as calcium ion magnesium ion etc okay now what will happen as the temperature increases okay solubility increase right but after certain time or after certain temperature what will happen solubility decreases and that temperature in water is around 40 degree celsius okay so beyond 40 degree celsius the solubility of these material decreases right now what will happen after that once solubility will de decrease precipitation of the material will start and material will start depositing over the heat transfer surface okay so that example i have taken with water other fluids also have similar tendency right so because of increase in temperature we can face the problem of scaling in the material because 40 degree or somewhere near to that is very less temperature and heat exchangers usually we operate at very high temperatures right so we have to be careful while designing because you cannot change the nature of the fluid fluid whatever fluid you want to use you have to use okay you have to design in such a way so that it's uh, the bad tendency of the fluid can be avoided okay now how i can do that let me tell you like what is the effect of that dirt factor when scaling formation occur or dirt formation occur over the uh, tube surface or over the metal surface then it will offer an extra resistance okay and therefore it is included in overall heat transfer coefficient expression fine because of this uh, resistance because of this resistance overall heat transfer coefficient decreases and if you remember the o and if you remember the overall heat transfer coefficient expression it has 1 by hod 1 by hid okay that is the coefficient of dirt factor that will be reciprocal to dirt factor okay Reci heat transfer coefficient of dirt is reciprocal to the dirt factor value right so as dirt factor increases overall heat transfer coefficient decreases so where i am compensating basically if i am considering dirt factor which reduces overall coefficient and if you are considering q is equal to u a delta t l m what i am doing basically i am increasing the area right because i am decreasing overall heat transfer coefficient so if i am doing so if i am doing so what i am doing basically i am oversizing the heat exchanger right I am oversizing the heat exchanger because I am already considering lesser heat transfer coefficient and this oversizing will allow the and this oversizing will compensate the reduction in performance during operation okay because uh, what will happen we have uh, because whatever surface I am considering it will have scale formation in due operation okay if i am oversizing the heat exchanger then the dirt formation will be there but it will occur for longer time if as compared to lesser heat transfer area so fouling factors are usually quoted as heat transfer resistances rather than coefficients they are difficult to predict and are usually based on past experience because when you are designing a heat exchanger okay 
at that time you are calculating one by u not considering all five parameters but at that time your exchanger is not existing so how dirt factor you can consider okay that you can consider based on past experience that if i am having this fluid it will give that much dirt factor okay and accordingly how much oversize of exchanger i have to do that i can decide from the beginning right so choosing right dirt factor value is important in design of heat exchanger okay as for as selection of design of fouling coefficient it will be an economic decision how this will be an economic decision okay now let me explain that with the help of one graph let's say here i am having a graph where on y axis i am considering cost and here let's say i am having dirt coefficient hf okay now what will happen hf is what hf is dirt coefficient fine and hf is basically re reciprocal of dirt factor okay now as dirt factor increases as dirt factor increases hf decreases okay and once hf decrease overall heat transfer coefficient will also overall heat transfer coefficient will also decrease now once overall heat transfer coefficient decrease area will increase right so as dirt factor increases fine hf will decrease and area will increase so i am having capital investment like this because i am having more and more heat transfer area right as hf will decrease in this direction however if i am considering 1 by however if i am considering hf and in this direction if i am considering that hf in, in, is increasing hf is increasing is what is if hf is increasing what is the meaning of that overall heat transfer coefficient will increase right so heat transfer area will decrease like this okay so overall heat transfer area will decrease as hf will increase now if i am having lesser heat transfer area it will have more and more tendency to file to foul again and again okay it will have more and more tendency to file it will have more and more tendency to foul again and again what is the meaning of that if i am having lesser area it will be fouled in less time it it means maintenance cost will increase okay or we can say the cycle time in which the cleaning of exchanger should take place it will decrease cycle time decrease means the maintenance cost will increase or we can consider as the operating cost will increase right this is the area and this is the operating cost so optimum hf will be like this okay where i am having minimum overall cost so that that would be this factor okay so in this way we can consider that dirt factor is an economic decision so the optimum design will be obtained by balancing the extra capital cost of larger heat exchanger against the savings in operating cost obtained from longer operating time between cleaning that larger area will give okay so in that way i hope you understand the so i hope you understand how to select the optimum dirt factor okay and if you consider the graph which i have just discussed that there are two factors first is capital investment and second is the operating cost okay so these two factors work opposite to each other as hf will increase right so this is the perfect problem for optimization okay so we can consider optimum hod value by balancing the capital investment due to higher area and by balancing the operating cost due to longer cleaning time if i increase the area right so in that way i can choose the optimum 
फाउलिंग कोफिशेंट फाइन नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन इज दो वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग लार्जर एरिया बट डेफिनेटली इट विल गो टू मेंटेनेंस आफ्टर सर्टेन टाइम ओके सो वॉट विल हैपन एट दैट टाइम माई माई प्लांट कैन नॉट रिमेन एट शट डाउन पोजिशन फॉर लॉन्गर ड्यूरेशन सो द बेटर ऑप्शन इज आई हैव टू चूज डुप्लीकेट सो द बेटर ऑप्शन इज आई हैव टू यूज डुप्लीकेट इक्विपमेंट फाइन सो लेट से इफ आई एम हैविंग विद लेट से इफ आई एम डीलिंग विद सिक्स हीट एक्सचेंजर्स आई हैव टू कंसिडर सेवन हीट एक्सचेंजर्स वन इज हीट एक्सचेंजर विल रिमेन एट स्टैंड बाई पोजिशन ऑल द टाइम ओके सो वेन एवर द रिक्वायरमेंट अकर्स लाइक इफ हीट एक्सचेंजर लाइक इफ हीट एक्सचेंजर इज नॉट वर्किंग वी कैन यूज दैट हीट एक्सचेंजर एंड सेम थिंग विल अकर विद अदर इक्विपमेंट लाइक इवेपोरेटर रिएक्टर्स एट्सेट्रा सो डुप्लीकेट इक्विपमेंट इज मस्ट वेन आई एम डीलिंग विद डर्ट फैक्टर प्रॉब्लम ओके नाउ हियर आई एम हैविंग अ टेबल this is again available in richardson coulson volume 6 here i am having depending upon the uh, type of fluid we can have uh, dirt coefficient as well as dirt factor so you see dirt factor are inversely proportional to the coefficient okay and here we have and here we are given the range of coefficient as well as factor for a given fluid so to start with to start with hod and hid can be taken as mean value of this right so in this way according to the fluid i can choose the dirt factors and uh, so next parameter we are going to discuss is the mean temperature difference okay so you are already have seen how to select overall heat transfer coefficient dirt factor and then the mean temperature difference mean temperature difference usually in a heat exchanger we consider logarithmic mean temperature difference because we have co current and counter current heat transfer okay we have co so for counter current flow logarithmic mean temperature is given by this expression okay temperature approach of one side and this is temperature approach of another side and then uh, and then log of these temperature approaches so i think this equation you are aware with this uh, very well so this is for counter current okay now my point is why i am considering log mean temperature difference because continuously change in temperature occur in both fluids okay if i draw the profile if i draw the profile hot fluid will move like this cold fluid will move like this so that may be linear that may be non linear if linearity will occur we can consider simple lmtd if linearity will occur we can consider simple arithmetic mean however here non linearity may also occur along the length therefore we consider log mean temperature difference so this is the equation when you are considering counter current flow and here we can consider uh, co current flow lmtd also where temperature differences at one side is capital t1 minus small t1 and capital t2 minus small t2 okay so in most of the sh uh, heat exchanger shell and tube heat exchanger we have co current and counter current and cross flow as well okay let's say if i am considering one two pass shell and tube heat exchanger in one tube there may be co current in another fluid there may be counter current and when the fluid is entering from shell nozzle to uh, shell side it will cross the fluid which is flowing in tubes so their cross flow will also occur so usually in shell and tube heat exchanger we have mixed flow where co current counter current and mixed where co current and counter current and cross flow all three flow occurs simultaneously and therefore whatever mean temperature difference we have calculated it will not work it will work only when there is co current or counter current but here we have the mixture so in that case we have some so in that case we found some reduction in overall 
So, in that case we found some reduction in LMTD value and that reduction will be counted considering another factor and that factor is FT factor. Okay, if you see delta T m equal to F t into delta T L m. So, that is basically the um, log mean temperature difference for counter flow. Okay, this is for counter flow F t L m T d correction factor. So, maximum value or F t. So, maximum value of F t will be 1 and uh, therefore, we can consider that uh, F t will give a lesser mean temperature difference in comparison to LMTD and the reason is very simple because it has mixed flow not a particular flow. Okay. So, here I am stopping this lecture, I will continue with details of FT correction factor and other parameters in next part of this lecture that is lecture 5. So, that is all for now, thank you.